Is your goal to stay in this marriage? Yes, one marriage and that's it. He's been physically abusive with you multiple times, correct? Correct. And that wasn't a deal breaker? It was. It was, but I tried to see past it, tried to see the good in him. Well, based on results, it wasn't a deal breaker. Right. Because you're still in the relationship. But I'm not saying you shouldn't be. I'm just trying to find out how you look at it. You said he's, he's beaten you up. He's punched you in the back of the head. He's spit in your face. He's called you everything but decent. And those aren't deal breakers. They are deal breakers. I'm just, it's hard to get out of the marriage when somebody has taken away your job, your money, everything, any kind of finances. Like, I don't know what I'm supposed okay, to do. Okay, well, now we're talking about two different things. One, you said you were staying in because of the values and your belief that you get married one time. Now you're saying you can't afford to get out. I mean, are, are these things... I'm trying to stay in because of the values. But if it ever comes to a time where I have to get out, right. I don't know how I'm supposed to get out. I understand. And that's a very valid question, particularly if you're with an abuser. And now he says he's not, and we're going to give him a chance to answer to that in a minute. You say that getting punched in the head's a deal breaker, but based on results, it's not because you stayed. And getting uh, hit, thrown around, demeaned, abandoned, neglected, starved, whatever, those aren't deal breakers. So I'm, I'm just asking you, is there something that is? Recently I went to jail. You said you blew up and started hitting him. I did. The reason why we got in a fight is because he's trying to join this motorcycle club. Right. And I'm not a fan of it. So he's been hitting you, so now you've started retaliating and hitting him. I am not proud of that moment. Right. At all. Um, I just had my second miscarriage recently mm -hmm. and being locked up in a camper with no kind of finances, no way to have any kind of food, no way to, I don't talk to anybody. He's isolated me away from people. And then whenever he wants to take me out after two weeks, after him being out with all of his friends, doing whatever he wants to do, he starts calling me those names again. And just all that bottled up emotion, I exploded and it, I'm not proud of that moment. Okay, what do you mean locked up in a camper? Well, our house is getting remodeled, so right. we bought a camper down the street from our house. Uh -huh. So we were staying in it. Y you weren't? imprisoned in it, you could leave. You, I could leave, you, but you I just had, had no, nowhere to go. I had no gas in my car. I had no kind of money to pay gas in my car to go do anything. Right. You were having to borrow dog food, I borrowed from, dog the, food from, from the from neighbors neighbor. to feed the dogs. Mm -hmm. But you did call him. I did call him. And you said, I, I need you. I, I need I'm some kind of food. I'm stuck here. I have no food. I have no money. I have no gas to get anywhere. And what did he say? Uh, well, once was too bad. Um, I'm out doing something and it's, I, I'll take you later. And then later and him saying, well, I can't go now. You've had two miscarriages. I have. And were you pregnant during this particular time? I was. Because you said in your tape piece, you said uh, you were having to live on canned vegetables and it wasn't enough to feed your unborn baby. And then you ultimately miscarried that child. Yes. And what's his reaction to that? Um, we got lucky. How'd you feel when he said that? Uh, hurt, disappointed. 